Welcome back guys to another Dutchman tech and how to. Today, we're ordering press on bearing bolt in shafts. All right, so you've been on our website or you have our printed out order form and you're wondering, how do I get through this? Well, I'm gonna recommend printing our how to measure guide in addition to this video. You can find that at dutchmanaxles.com under the ordering page. Simply scroll down to custom press on bearing bolt in axles and the how to measure or ordering to find guide is right there for you on the left side. All right, first things first, we're gonna need a couple of things. A pair of gloves, be handy. A tape measure you trust. A couple of straight edges are always helpful. And then a pair of calipers that you know have been calibrated that you can also trust. Right from the get go, we're gonna put the rear end type at the top. If you got a Ford 9 inch or a Dana 44, important information for us, just in case we're crunching numbers or we're double checking anything like spline count or fitment, it's important for us to know what the diff is. After rear end, we're gonna do our shaft length or as we call it, AL, axle length. This is always measured from the outside face of the shaft or the mounting surface for your drum or rotor, the wheel side, to the end of the shaft using a straight edge. You want your tape measure to be as parallel to the shaft as possible while you're measuring. You definitely want to avoid measuring at an angle, which will skew your overall length. We'd hate for you to end up with something you did not expect when you gave us length. If you don't have axle shafts, we can still figure out what shaft length you have by using our alternate measurements. Now I went ahead and made a separate video on all about that, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, that'll help get you through what you need to have and how to measure in case you don't have shafts to work with. After axle shaft length, we're going to go over to spline count. This is the number of teeth on the shaft or in your side gear. A really helpful tip for counting your spline count is on the first tooth you count, put a big obvious mark either on the tooth or beside the tooth showing you where you started. That way if you lose count halfway around, you know where you started and you can pick back up there. I also like to mark every five, so when I'm counting, or if I lose count where I can go, I can quickly go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, then I've only got one more, 31 spline. You'll notice on our how to measure guide, we have a little chart that shows the diameters that correlate with the spline counts. So if you have a pair of calipers, you can put it on the spline and see if that matches what you end up counting. All right, moving on down. Next is the axle flange. Now this is this diameter, which is the plate that the wheel studs are installed in. We want to know what this size needs to be. This is a non-critical dimension, so we'll use a tape measure to measure this. Sounds simple enough, but if you're changing to disc brakes from drums, this diameter might have to change. This is a big deal if you're switching from an OEM drum brake kit to an aftermarket disc kit. A lot of aftermarket rotors have a smaller inside clearance and will in fact denote that the flange needs machined down to clear their rotor. Now on the topic of rotors and drums, the next one is our pilot. Some people call this a center register. Now it's that smaller diameter on the axle flange itself. This is a critical dimension. We want this measured with a pair of calipers. Some people have used a micrometer, but I recommend a pair of calipers. Get in there and measure that especially if you have wheel studs. And you're gonna measure that with your caliper a couple of times to make sure you're getting a good reading. Sometimes you'll need to clean them up from old shaz if they got rust or dirt or whatever from sitting in the yard for a long time. And again, if you're changing brakes, the size may need to be different. Rotors are a lot more forgiving, but if you're running drum brakes, then we wanna know what that size is because a drum is pretty unforgiving when it comes to the pilot size. So you can also take this dimension from the center hole of your drum. On our how to measure guide, we publish these sizes as well. So you can see, well, what is Ford truck standard? What is Ford car? Wow, there's three Mustang sizes. Did not know that. You know, that kind of thing. Next is your brake offset. This is the space from your axle flange to your four bolt housing flange. And this would be taken without brakes on your rear end. So if you have the ability to measure this, what you would do is you would install an axle shaft Make sure there is no brake hardware on, so no backing plate, no caliper bracket, and then make sure your shaft is fully installed. And you can measure from the outside or wheel side of the axle shaft to the wheel side, or again, the outside of the housing flange. That is your brake offset. If you can't do that, that's totally understandable. We do also have a couple of other dimensions. We have our BE, which is 
bearing edge, and we have our BS, which is bearing shoulder. If your bearings are on your axle shafts, you can measure the BE. If you don't have bearings on your axle, you can measure the BS. I'll give a re quick recap, but we did make a separate video on how to measure all this stuff and why it's important to note they are different measurements. While in rare instances, you might come up with the same number, in most cases, these will not create the same number. So it's important to know which one you are measuring. The BE is from axle flange, again, outside, wheel side, to the outer race of your wheel bearing or the outer seal if you have a tapered roller bearing. You can use your retainer plate as a straight edge if that's helpful. You can also go through the flange if you have an axis hole, which gets your tape again closer to that bearing. Super helpful. If you don't have bearings and you're measuring the bearing shoulder, you can put your tape on the out again, either through the axis hole or on the outside of the flange and use a straight edge to come up to your tape. I like to use a straight edge that has a little bit of a radius. That makes sure my straight edge is not being pushed out by a sharp corner because a lot of these shoulders do have a smooth radius transition. Super helpful if you have one of these. If not, you can sort of line up that straight edge and rock it back and forth on the with two sides touching the shoulder to come out to your tape. We made another video, so if you wanna check all that out, link in the description. Next, bearing journal size. The bearing journal is the diameter which the bearing is pressed onto. If you have bearings on your shaft, sometimes this can be pretty tough to measure, understandably so. But for nine inch guys, a quick tip is the factory ball bearing is 1.533. The factory tapered roller bearing, or the set 20, which has an outer seal, is 1.564. Now there are aftermarket options. Uh, Green makes a O-ring bearing that has a 1.564 inner diameter, even though it's a ball bearing. They also make one that is a direct factory replacement with an O-ring. So measuring sometimes is your best bet. I also want to point out that often with bearings installed on a shaft, just after the lock ring or wedding ring, there is an inner seal surface there and that surface can be different than your bearing journal diameter. So it can be tricky to measure that. What I often say is wiggle your calipers right up against that lock ring to see if you can get close to one of the two popular sizes. Of course, if you're small bearing, the small bearing Ford 9 inch is 1.379. It's also the same with the A9 bearing and a few of the other BOP bearings. What's nice is they're pretty much an industry standard. And again, this is published information on our how to measure guide and our stock replacement axle charts. So be sure to check those out. If you don't have bearings, this is quite simple. Place your calipers on the bearing surface, wiggle it back and forth, make sure you're getting a good reading and check the box that applies to you. Next is bearing type. We kind of already talked about this, but there is the tapered roller bearing, which has an outer seal and a ball bearing, which does not have an outer seal. And some people refer to it as the sealed bearing, but we try to avoid confusion in that description because they both are sealed. If you're not sure what wheel bearing you have, because there are multiple ball bearings and tapered roller bearings out there, let's look at the housing end type. Now on our how to measure guide, we have a chart of the different housing ends. Take a look at the spread of those bolt patterns. It's tempting to look at the shape and identify with shape, but the truth is your make and model can confuse us on that a little bit. The shape is not always going to be the same, even though the pattern might be the same. Again, four nine inches straightforward. We got the three standards. But we also have the other stuff for the Dana rear ends and the if you're converting from 10 or 12 bolts, make sure you're looking at the center to center of that bolt pattern. Knowing the housing end will help us identify any questions we might have with the brakes or with your bearing choice. So if you're fuzzy on any of those topics, be sure to fill out the housing end or the HE. Moving on to the brake kit information. If you're buying aftermarket brakes, list the manufacturer and part number if available or a brief description of what they are or what they're meant to fit if they're drum for Mustang, if they're drum for F-150 from the late 70s. All that's really helpful information for us. We're gonna use this information to double check any other numbers related to the brake kit info. Next, the bolt pattern. The reason why most of you are ordering custom shafts. You've changed bolt patterns, you bought new wheels, you had some special wheels manufactured, you're inheriting someone's mess. The bolt pattern is an easy one. We have the first blank, which is the number of studs in the axle, so five and then the bolt circle or diameter that those holes are drilled on, four and three quarter. So the bolt pattern would be five on four and three quarter. So the bolt pattern would be five on four and three quarter, which is Chevy passenger car. If you're confused about your bolt pattern and you wanna know how to measure it, i.e. if you think you can measure center to center on odd lugs, check out this video in the description. 
on how to measure your bolt pattern. Last but not least is the hardware section of the order form. Uh, you get to pick what studs you want us to install on the shafts. If you want to provide your own wheel studs, we do ask for a very accurate measurement on the hole you would like us to drill or the knurl of the stud you intend to install. The reason is, is if we get that off, let's say we drill the hole slightly too large, then your stud has a chance of spinning in the hole. Or if we get it too small, there's a chance your stud won't go in at all. So we wanna make sure that that's an accurate dimension. What you can do is give us a stud part number from like ARP or something like that to help us identify what hole we should drill for the stud. Or if you want studs from us, we'll pop them in for free. The same is also true with the wheel bearings. If you want wheel bearings from us, we'll pop them in for free. There are rare instances where we cannot install wheel bearings and that typically has to do with if you are using a caliper bracket that is also the retainer plate, which would be hard to put on after we put the bearings on. All right, that's all for this video. If you have any questions or you think I missed anything, drop a comment below, let us know. Check out the how to measure guide, dutchmanaxles.com slash ordering. Also, let us know what you wanna see next. That's it for this one. See ya.